what's up guys? Bum, 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 bum. It's finally happened. Um, very, very generous help from uh, um, uh, yeah, the same subscriber who I keep mentioning, Peter. Um, he lives over in the Netherlands. And he owns a web hosting company, which he runs from uh, krema.nl, K-R-A-A-I-M-A dot N-L. Um, and he has very generously offered to uh, host my website um, at a very reduced rate, basically. He's being extremely generous. Um, he's registered the domain for me. We've actually launched it already. So if you head on over to frozenelectronics.com, uh, you can check out what's there. There's not a lot there yet, but uh, you know it's going to take time to build up some content. I've been playing around with the themes. I think I finally settled on the theme I like. Um, it's very flexible. There's a lot I can do with it. Uh, of course, he's a bit more experienced in this than I am, so he's been helping do all the back end, um, which is funny. In high school, I probably could have done it myself, but now I just I haven't done that stuff in so long, uh, and the web has moved so far forward from what I when I was doing it. It was HTML, pure HTML, with a little bit of uh, cascaded style sheets. Those were just becoming popular. Um, everything was done with frames, which was um, which was a really good way to do things, but it made things very complex in that. Um, every time you clicked on something, the other frame it would have to load a whole new page. And if something glitched and didn't work right, you get all these like scroll bars, and uh, it was just it could be really messy. You really had to know what you were doing. Uh, and of course, now everything is done in PHP for the most part. Um, and I learned a little bit of PHP last year, right before I got back into electronics uh, a lot. I spent a few months learning PHP and MySQL. I actually wanted to get back into web creation. Um, I got fairly far. I was running my own server. Uh, I was actually hosting my own website from my uh, PC, which was pretty cool, um, but it just wasn't for me. It was just, um, I don't know, I think you have to be a certain type of person to get into that. Obviously Peter is. He's excellent at it. He's done an amazing job so far. Um, the website looks really nice. He got it up so quickly. I am just so thankful. So, um, if you're a subscriber to me on YouTube, I would really appreciate it if you went and checked out the website. Of course, you don't have to. It helps. Um, also, depending on how much you use YouTube, I don't know, some people are different. I usually go to YouTube to check uploads, but just like the EEV blog, actually not like the EEV blog, I'm going to be uh, creating a new post every time I upload a video. So if you want, um, it'll be embedded right there. You'll be able to watch it. Um, I've got it all set up. There's a very cool website that I've been using for a long time. Um, they've got some very... It's just pretty unbelievable how powerful this website is. It's uh, called ifttt.com, which stands for If This Then This. So it's basically a very simple logic. Um, if something happens, then do this. And you can get it to trigger off of so many different things, the list is just endless. Um, the big one that I just set up, if I upload a YouTube video on my Frozen Electronics channel, then create a post on my WordPress blog with all the information for that video. Completely automated, this really cool website does it for you. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, that's Peter messaging me. Um, very, very cool, and I just got that set up. You can do so many other things, like on New Year's, you can get it to tweet your followers. Um, for example, there's an RSS feed that I really like, the by Element 14. So every time something is added to that feed, it gets pushed into Pocket, which is um, a Read It Later app that I use on all my Android devices, stuff like that. Like, you can trigger off of, I mean, I'm sure you watching, you've already got a couple things you can imagine what you can do with it, you know. Every time a blog you like post, you can get it to text you on your phone. Like, every time the EV blog uploads a video, for example, you could get a text to your phone, or you can get an email, or you can get it put into your pocket. I mean, the list is endless. Anyway, very, very cool, very easy to use. Um, you create what's called a recipe which is basically if this then this. And there's hundreds and thousands of recipes already on the website that people have already used. Um, a couple of them, I actually used one. Uh, there's one that every morning at 8 a.m. it'll text your phone with the current weather. It'll say today's high and low is this, the current weather is this, but and that's it. Like Something like that. The weather network here in Canada, I would have to pay three dollars a month for that service and now it's free with IFTTT. Like very very cool. Anyway, so the blog is launched um, but this post is actually going to be about a project I've been working on. Um, i got to get out my engineering notebook here. I highly recommend these notebooks from SparkFun. Uh, they're like 
four or five bucks, I think. Uh, 52 pages. Uh, of course, you get to customize them, cover them in stickers and stuff. Very cool. I really like it. Really, really tough. The pages are gray with a white grid on them. They're very good. They have a project and date and title and everything at the bottom. Uh, as you can see, you can, you know, you draw um, schematics. So what I've been working on is on this page here. It's a battery charger using a chip from TI called the BQ205, um, uh, yes, BQ2057. So this is a lithium ion integrated circuit that will automatically charge batteries. Um, and there's four different versions of this chip depending on the nominal voltage of your battery. So 4.1 or 4.2 for a single cell or 8.2 or 8.4 for a double cell. Mine is actually the 8.4, so the highest rated voltage that they make. Um, and you set it up, I better get a pointer. Uh, you actually have to really read the data sheet. The mistake I made um, was not reading the data sheet fully and I got really confused. This resistor right here, our sense, the drop across that is read by the sense pin on the chip and that's how it knows uh, how much current it's letting through. And based on that, it'll either open or close this um, P-channel MOSFET, as far as I can tell. Now down below here, what I have up here, this is the circuit in the data sheet, I just copied it in for reference. Down here is actually the circuit you can use uh, that automatically compensates for uh, the internal resistance of the battery, that sort of thing, which is really cool. So it'll automatically compensate the charging speed uh, based on that. Now, you have to calculate these two resistors, RCOMP1 and RCOMP2, and there's quite a bit of uh, math involved with that. As you can see, I've scratched a bunch of things out and redid it. I had to actually find the data sheet for my battery, uh, figure out what the, in the average internal resistance of the battery was, I actually did the math wrong because I did it for a single cell, forgetting that the two cells are in series, so of course it'll double the resistance. So I had to recalculate it with that. Very easy calculations. Once you actually, I mean, the data sheet is a bit long, uh, but it's not really that complex. It looks much more complex than it is. Um, so if you just read through the data sheet, it's actually very easy to uh, read through it and understand all the calculations you have to make and uh, put it all together. I mean, it's quite easy, really. Uh, the other little thing here, um, I have two LEDs, depending, one's gonna be green, one's gonna be red, depending on uh, if it's charging or not. So again, the name of that chip is the BQ2057. So now I'm gonna point you down at my breadboard here. So you can see I have it set up already. The chip is actually off board. I have a little um, SOIC breakout board that I'm using here. Uh, and so there's the chip there. And uh, it's just broken out through these cables. I don't know how well that's gonna work. I haven't actually completely finished this yet. Um, the, the problem being that the drop resistor, the sense resistor, which is right here uh, in front of this P-channel MOSFET, uh, I need 0.2 ohms, and so I was trying to, uh, I was using a few different, um, oh, that's weird, when I touched, maybe I'm just nuts. I thought I heard crackling in my speakers when I was touching that, but everything's turned off right now. Anyway, um, I was trying to use a couple of resistors in parallel, um, but of course I was trying to do the math and I just don't have quite the right values. I am just gonna end up having to buy um, something. Oh, you're way off center there. That's a little bit better. So anyway, there's the battery. These are sold at uh, Active Surplus in Toronto. Um, they have the protection board built in, 8.2 volts. Uh, actually, they're 7.4, or sorry, 8.4 volts, 7.4 volt nominal. You can split them apart. Well, this might be kind of hard for you to see. All the information is in there. They're 3.7 volt, 820 milliamp hour. Now, um, as far as I can tell, when you put two of these in series, you double the voltage, but the uh, rated capacity is still 820 milliamp hours. As far as I can tell, I believe that if you put them in parallel, you would get 3.7 volts at uh, 1640 milliamp hours. So that's why um, I chose a charging current of I was aiming for between 400 and 500 milliamp hours. 
That um, goes into a lot of the math you do at this point here. You have to decide, uh, I ended up choosing 500 milliamps, uh, the internal resistance, and then there's a bunch of values. <laughs> Oh, there's that yawning again. I'm sorry, I bet you I'm making you guys yawn every time you watch this. Depending on um, the values you take off the data sheet, um, you have to do all the calculations and work it out. So this is still a work in progress. Um, once it's done, I'll show you guys the complete version and uh, it should be pretty cool to see how it works. Um, I'm hoping I can charge this battery up to full because there's a few different projects I want to use it for. But as you can see, there's a few little things on this breadboard uh, that are invaluable to have. Big one is these screw terminals. I cannot stress enough how handy it is to have these screw terminals around. Um, they're almost always standard spacing, so you can just plug them right into a breadboard. It makes it so much easier for stuff like this where you have bare wires. Um, another thing that's handy to have, of course, is I have a whole drawer full of MOSFETs, transistors, and regulators. And uh, in this case, they, there's actually a whole section in the data sheet on how to pick the correct um, transistor for this circuit and the one I had on hand oh, I swear to god I haven't been yawning at all over the past hour anyway um, this one actually happened to fit those specs perfectly so that'll actually be a perfect match and then of course uh, it's really good to have these breakout cables like this uh, female to female cables Singles are great, multiples are great. I have a whole bunch of these uh, female to female. They're really handy for, for example, on your AVR Dragon. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, you can actually permanently wire in the chip. So you put a chip into your uh, ZIF socket here. And then these pins here represent, are directly connected to the pins of the ZIF socket. So you connect up everything you want. Um, JTAG, ISP, they also have a power header. There's also high voltage uh, serial and parallel programming here. Uh, so you hook those up using female wires to the correct pins and away you go. You have a prototyping, um, essentially prototyping right here. If you have a big 40 pin dip, like an Atmega um, 644 or something, you hook up your JTAG and your power and everything, then you can use cables like this to break it out to a breadboard. Um, I know that yes, you could just put the, the chip directly into the breadboard and bring cables back over here. I actually find, I sometimes have problems with that, so I've been using the ZIF socket almost exclusively. Something else I mentioned in a, another video that I haven't uploaded yet, we're gonna be looking at relays. Um, this is a 24 volt DC relay. They're very cool. I don't know why I love relays so much. I'm gonna quickly fire this up just to show you. Um, if you're ever the one thing that people who ha they know people who know nothing about electronics, they will all know relays or anyone who drives anyway will know relays. They'll know what relays sound like because the turn signals in cars are relays. Listen. Sounds just like when you have your turn signal on, doesn't it? As you can see, a little actuator in there. Let's let the macro zoom come on. There we go. Very cool. I really, I don't know why, I really like relays. I could just sit here and play with this thing all day. Um, for those of you that don't know how relays work, as you can see, there is a connection right here, which is permanently connected through to this uh, those pins right there. There's four of them side by side. Those connect through this uh, probably copper connection terminal right there. This coil m magnetically moves this plate back and forth. So you can switch a current between those two sets of pins. If you look at the front, you can see that there's actually four you can see the whole mechanism move. Very cool. Um, they're usually rated to how much current they can break. So if you have a couple amps flowing through there, it'll actually be able to pull away from that and break it, which is kind of neat. I really don't know much about this other than it takes 24 volts uh, to activate the relay. Other than that, um, I don't know much, but I'm gonna try and do some cool stuff with relays in the next uh, couple of videos. So stay tuned for that as well. Something else cool I picked up while I was in Toronto. 
this giant capacitor. It's only 20,000 microfarad. They did have some bigger ones, but they were very, very expensive. Uh, 85C rated, 19th week of 1985, so this baby's been around longer than I have. Uh, rated to 25 volt DC. So I think we should be able to do some cool stuff with this as well. Hopefully uh, some energy harvesting or something like that. Um, last but not least, I uh, recently built this ribbon cable tester. Um, which I will also hook up now. Let me just drop the voltage down on my power supply. Don't want to put 24 volts through this. That would not be good. I guess I should lower this down for you guys a little bit. And you fire it up and all the lights come on. If your ribbon cable um, has no breaks or any mistakes in it. I just made this ribbon cable the other day and I was thinking about uh, one time I made a ribbon cable and it didn't work properly and it, I kept thinking that it was something else in the circuit and I finally narrowed it down to I had improperly attached the connector. Now you can see as I wiggle this back and forth you can see which pins are making contact and then you get different uh, patterns of light. It's kind of cool. You can sort of see the pattern I wired it up in. Very simple circuit to make. On the back just a few uh, connections. Basically you have uh, power coming in, it goes through a drop resistor, it goes to all 10 pins, goes through the cable, then each individual pin goes to an LED that goes to ground. As simple as that. I'm also going to connect the 6 pin soon, um, so you can also do 6 pin um, cable testing, but those, resist those uh, LEDs look much brighter than they really are. Um, but they're definitely bright enough to see them. Uh, very handy little thing to have around if you use ribbon, ribbon cables a lot. I believe you can actually buy commercial testers um, that'll do a little bit more than this. They'll send a little bit more current or uh, they'll send a signal through it to see the signal integrity. But for basic testing, this is all you really need. Other than that, my boards still haven't shown up. My ATtiny13 breakout boards, uh, which I'm not very impressed that they haven't shown up yet. Man, this tripod is a little bit hard to keep straight. And I apologize for the long single shot video like this, but uh, I just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, yeah, the big thing is the website, um, but more importantly, please like and subscribe and share if you can. If you know other people who are into electronics and want to see projects, I know my videos haven't been super interesting yet. That's because I'm just trying to get the ball rolling. I have a lot of different projects on the go. I'm also studying a lot, um, so I only have so much time to actually sit and make these videos. Um, my sleep schedule has been a little bit messed up lately as well, so that's definitely not helping things. Um, but yeah, I'm, there's, I have a whole bunch of ideas for cool stuff we can do. Um, my big thing is, I am lucky enough to, I mean, I've shown you guys my, my bench before. I am lucky enough to have tons of stuff just lying around. But even with all the stuff that I have lying around, there are so many projects uh, online that I don't have the right stuff for. It's amazing how many projects I go through um, and it just I just don't have enough stuff. So um, my goal is to create projects that you guys can do um, that you can either get the chips for free by sampling them from uh, the manufacturer or ideally stuff that you will actually have lying around. Very basic resistors, transistors, caps. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with basic stuff. If you look at TalkingElectronics.com, um, there's tons and tons of good examples on there. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend checking out Talking Electronics, FrozenElectronics.com, Krama, uh, Krama, dot N-L, K-R-A-A-I-M-A, dot N-L. That's Peter's website. Uh, he's been very, very kind and generous, as I mentioned. Um, of course, check out the EV blog. Check out Technical Illusions, that's Jerry Ellsworth's new company. The Cast AR looks amazing. If I had had a bunch of money to drop, I would have dropped a whole bunch of money on that. I really would love to have a Cast AR. Very, very cool technology. And of course, go check out Mike's Electric Stuff. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys keep coming back. And I really hope you enjoyed the videos, and I really hope that I can keep doing this and uh, create more stuff. Um, anyway, have a good one, and something cool will be coming down the pipe soon. Thanks.